Fragile X Syndrome. Ever heard of it? Most people haven't, even though 100,000 people in the United States have Fragile X and countless others are affected by it. The leading cause of inherited mental retardation, Fragile X causes developmental delays, autistic behaviors, low muscle tone, speech, and sensory problems. Most people, even many doctors, have never heard of Fragile X. The goal of this documentary is to spread awareness and understanding about the disease and show how the fast-paced scientific frontier is pushing for a cure. But first, let's meet two families, the Bates and the Locks. Each has a son with Fragile X. Joshua Locke is an adorable five-year-old boy who lives with his seven-year-old sister, Alyssa, who is unaffected, and his parents, Jill and Scott. He doesn't fit into a typical mold. He's, he's not autistic. He's not PDD. He's, he's got Fragile X, and his learning style is different. He has a huge amount of support services, speech and language, occupational therapy, and he has um, special instruction services about 15 hours a week. This little boy works hard, and he works hard for these people, um, and he wants to do so much. For Joshua to get something into his repertoire to have learned it, it's between 500 and 1,000 times of having you know, played with the little people, going into a little line to get onto the bus, or um, acted something out, or practice something again and again. And once he's practiced it and learned it, it's in there. But getting it into him has been a challenge. Sometimes you have to let him cry. You know, he has to work through things. He has to learn that not everything is going to be a therapist giving him the answer. Because he's only five, I think we're at the beginning of that kind of frustration. The bigger kids are doing the monkey bars. He wants to do those monkey bars. And I know motor planning is not easy, but he was determined to do it. And I think it was two days ago, he did it. Um, but the most obvious for Joshua is, is the speech. No bottom of the hill, but you have to move to the side because there's a car. He just started pedaling a bicycle. But you know, three years of physical therapy, it's, you know, he finally is getting it and enjoying it. He's had an incredible year, and I'm hoping that we continue to ride the wave of his success. He's an amazingly happy little boy. Um, who loves to do things and loves to try to do things by himself um, and to help out and to be the big boy um, and to show off all the things that he can do. Josh is sweet. He is the sweetest kid you've ever met. Happy, energetic. He's a pleasure to be around and I think he brings out the best in people. He's funny. He takes pride in everything he does. He's infectious with his happiness. You know, something bad can happen. He comes up and he goes, you know, mommy, hug. And he can make a lot of things go away. Josh is only five years old now, but his parents already have plans for his future. Realistically, he's not gonna be fully independent. I'm not really worried about it when he's seven or eight or nine, because hopefully we're gonna be around. But I, I really worry what happens when we get older. When you have a, a child, there you don't want any ceiling. You know, there's no limits to what they can do. And I still hope that Joshua will achieve more than anyone has ever um, anticipated he will do, especially because he's so determined. I hope that there aren't that many limits for him. I'm, I'm optimistic for his future, but I'm scared. One of the best pieces of advice we got was from Dr. Sudholder. She said, don't ever expect less of him than you expect of anybody else. I have tremendous hopes for him to change, to change the world. Okay, lights, camera, action. Film. Now let's meet the Bate family. Jordan, a warm-hearted, sensitive 13-year-old boy, was diagnosed with Fragile X when he was two years old. Everything that the book tells you infants are supposed to do, he didn't do or did it late. Uh, we took him to the pediatrician who said not to worry about it, you know, he'll catch up. It was like a two-year odyssey of people telling us that we were crazy. It was identified by his pediatric orthopedist. He's like, listen, it's not my place to say, but there's this thing called Fragile X. Two weeks later, we get a phone call saying that he had Fragile X syndrome. We didn't know what it was. I go on the internet and it's like very scary. It was like a death in the family. At one point I had this young boy with all these possibilities. And now I have this baby that I'm being told, you know, may not speak, will never be able to take care of himself. Uh, may never be able to read and write or communicate, that, that was devastating. We did what had to be done, which is get him into early intervention, find schools, find therapists, and keep going. Jordan has already achieved much more than the doctors initially expected. 
when he is light, like you saw him before having fun talking on the camera, doing his little finger pointing and singing and dancing and kissing and I love you. Hi, yes. Hi, Jordy. Oh. When that smile comes on and the light comes through his eyes, he's like purely light, a angelic almost. Great personality, very funny, uh, likes to draw. I mean, he's got a great sense of humor. There's just pure, unadulterated, accepting uh, innocence uh, and love. Uh, uh, Jordy has no concept of anybody being mean to him. He'd never understand if a kid turned and called him a retard to his face. He'd have no idea, thank God. He loves everybody. If you love Jordy, he's gonna love you back. But when Jordy's in pain and Jordy's nervous, that's Jordy dark. And that, Jordy, makes my heart hurt. Cause then I know that He's not comfortable in his own skin, and I can't help him. And when we can't find the right meds and stuff, it's, it's horrible. That's the only thing that would make me upset is thinking about Jordy. Jordy's sad when he's Jordy like this. The rocking hitting Jordy is bad, Jordy. And there's not, you know, but we're trying. We try, we have a million good doctors, but sometimes there's no answer, you know? Well, the biggest thing that makes my life easier is the assistance I get from agencies where people come in and allow myself and my wife to go out together because it gives us a chance to be together and normal. We don't go to the beach. We don't go to the movies. We don't have play dates. Everything has to be planned out. I mean, a simple thing like going to the store. I can't go shopping with Jordy at a shop right. But you saw before when we were singing and dancing to our disco beat, that's the joy. That's fun. He feels so good about himself. That makes me feel elated. We've heard the personal stories of two families. Now let's find out what's in store for the future. Researchers all around the world are trying to understand the biological basis of Fragile X in an effort to find a cure. One of these researchers is Dr. Lynn Reagan, who is the head of the Reagan Lab of Molecular Biophysics and Biochemistry at Yale University. Dr. Reagan has already published papers and conducted experiments on Fragile X and continues to do so with a team of other members of her lab. So Fragile X syndrome was first recognized as being associated with a chromosomal abnormality and it was literally a fragile chromosome. Just looking at chromosomes you could kind of see a fragility at the end. People cloned what's going on in that region and what they found was that there was a protein that was called, that people called Fragile X mental retardation protein. And what had happened here, the, the cause of this fragility, was that there was repeats. So you have certain um, length of the in here in a normal person, and then in a so-called carrier person, it might be this length. And then if you reached greater than 200 repeats, then having this insertion prevented this protein getting made. Having that protein functioning properly is key to being normal. So, so my group um, is coming from a background in protein biochemistry and biophysics, so we're very focused on what that protein looks like, what it does, what the different domains, the different parts of that protein do. And more recently, we have become appreciative of how good zebrafish are as a model system because they've got a same complement of fragile X and fragile X related genes as humans do. So the big question is, what is the function of this protein? Because we know if it's not present or if it's present but malfunctioning, you get the phenomenon of fragile X. I think that finding out what this does, when it does it, and what are the consequences is definitely the way to go to developing ways to treat it. Research on Fragile X continues, and a cure is in sight. In the meantime, families affected by Fragile X receive care and support from various services. But wouldn't it be wonderful if Josh didn't have 20 hours of therapy every week? If Jordan could take just one drug that works and go to the shop right with his dad? Organizations like Fraxa, which raises awareness and money for research on Fragile X, are the bridge between these two worlds. The world of test tubes and DNA, and the world of Josh and Jordan. The spread of awareness is vital to this effort, and Fragile X organizations have taken on the responsibility of getting the word out. Donations to these organizations help families and fund research. Meeting Josh and Jordan inspires us to make a difference in their lives, and the lives of all those affected by Fragile X.